The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. Sports. Well, we're in the middle of Know the Show Hour, so listen carefully. Everything we talk about could get you tickets to Chicago Fire, Inner Miami with Lionel Messi. That is next week. So whatever we say, just, just listen and enjoy. We'll get the sports not too enjoyable. The Braves didn't get the memo yesterday that we had here on the show to chill out. Just relax, guys. You've got everything you want. You're the best team in baseball, home field They're advantage. Selfish. They're selfish. They're very selfish. I can't They're, believe them. I don't like them. Audacity? Yeah, yeah. yeah how, you ever heard how, of that? Yeah. How dare they? How dare they beat the Cubs last night? You're very mean of them. How dare they play to their capabilities? <laughs> that is just mean. Very mean. So Someone deserves a sprained ankle. I don't know who, but somebody. <laughs> damn it. I would like my own sprained ankle just to punish myself to make me forget that they lost 5-3. And as of right now, the Cubs are out. The Cubs are out of the playoffs. As of now. As of now. Settle down. No, they, could, they could still turn it around. Like, a, like an ankle. Plenty of season left. <laughs> Plenty of season left. Kenzie loves saying there's a lot of games left. <laughs> there, there's so many games. There's three left. There's three There's now. just always so many baseball games, yeah. though. Doesn't it feel like a lot all the time? It's because her life is tortured with youth baseball and her husband playing baseball. So she goes to about 580 baseball games a year. I Literally, it's yeah. not even a joke. So I'm like, oh, I know this game football <laughs> <laughs> so does three games not sound like a lot it still sounds like a lot to you but it's like it's like three games but then like you're paying attention to all the other teams playing so it's really like 15 games well, do you know what i mean there's a like, well if they lost by one point and they do this and they do this and somebody sneezes and then it's like okay <laughs> so now, we, now it's on every tv and it's like got it <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because that's exactly what's happening this weekend besides the obvious of watching the other teams. But what happened with the Marlins is stupid right now. So the Marlins game got postponed last night, which is the team just ahead of the Cubs in the wild card, with a score of 2-1 to one and the ninth inning and them having a runner on second base. It's been postponed. And no one knows at this point, I don't think, Case. I haven't heard anything. What they're going to do. Because they can't make it up today because the Marlins are in Pittsburgh. There's no travel day. There's no extra day. And the Marlins were already upset with the Mets because, as you guys remember, the game on Tuesday was rained out. They had to play a doubleheader on Wednesday. And the Marlins were mad at the Mets ground screw going, hey, you guys screwed this up. We could have played this game if you guys would have taken better care of your field. Now we're in the playoff hunt, and you guys are making us play a doubleheader. Last night, the Marlins trailing one nothing going into the ninth inning. They score two runs, take the lead, and then Mother Nature comes, and the game has been postponed TBD on what they're going to do. I mean, do. I got to be honest. Yeah? I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> The Marlins forfeit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what the big discussion is. Got well, bad news for you. Even if they forfeit, still out of the Cubs. Okay, well, but it helps. It's better. <laughs> and all, somebody may sneeze. And apparently these teams are not getting the memo from this sports cast, which no. is tragic, as the Braves did last night. But, so this, I thought it'd be over Sunday. This might not be over till Monday. They might do that game, that one half inning, four outs, on Monday. That's the weird thing is it's not like this game was rained out in the fourth inning. It was rained out in the top of the ninth. There's a chance people have to go to City Field in New York to watch four outs. I would do that. I, I, I'd, I'd, you haven't been to a Cubs game the entire <laughs> year. <laughs> you know You're what? such a liar. And you have four minutes when he walks to it. But I, 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 he's also, he's walked by Wrigley Field to take pictures, has not gone in. I know. It's pathetic. It's the it first is. year of my life I've never gone to a Cubs game. I blame Harper, my baby, for being just too much, too much to There's, handle. There, for a month straight, like all of August, Brian was going, oh, man, you and your girlfriend want to go to a Cubs game with me and, and Megan and the baby? I was like, yeah, I'd love to. That'd be awesome. And then it just never happened. When you have a baby. Harper's fault. Harper's free right now. Yeah, she got nothing going on. When you have a baby, you'll understand. Okay, all right. I've been okay. waiting to say that. I've been waiting to say that to a lot of people. <laughs> But, like, she costs no money to bring. You it's not about, strap her to the front. It's not it's about. It's amazing. It's, this is, wait, this what is, am I strapping her to? <laughs> the, the front the of front. you. Oh, the car I thought like you meant. Like a Bjorn. <laughs> the front of the car? Strap you don't the, even need a car to get to Wrigley. You live so close. Why would strap you? her to the front of the Nissan Rogue and get on over there and go to the you game. You guys could sell your parking spot for people going to a Cubs game. That's how close you live. We thought of that. Exactly. <laughs> I thought about putting on a spot here. We could park in our house. Okay, so anyway, here's where we're at. The Brewers are playing uh, not for nothing as well. So another memo to the Brewers. I know you hate the Cubs. How about lighten it up a little bit? Let us in. Come on. Come on, guys. We're all friends. It would friends. be so fun if we were all in the playoffs together. We go to Summerfest. We spend money up there in Milwaukee. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, not, not looking good. Not looking good. The White Sox beat the D-backs to kind of help, but it's too late now because the D-backs are firmly ahead in the wild card spot there. 
And Case made a point and got so much. Kenzie, did you see the, the thread with Case about him just... And Case is the White Sox fan here. He is the most diehard White Sox fan at Q101. And all he said was, boy, for a lot of dollar seats, the dollar lower level sold out. There's not many people in the stands. And he got destroyed on Twitter yesterday. So there were a lot of comments of, well, it was only one section that was a dollar. I understand that. I watched the entire game. The stadium was empty the entire time. And there are people on Twitter that are going, I'm never listening to Q101 again after you said that. Because of what Case said. I go, I'm a White Sox fan. You can't be happy with this team this year, no matter how much you might love them. But wait, like, I, I don't understand because if it's just you were just saying it wasn't full. I know. You think there was nothing mean about like that's just a that was no, just, just factual. Like, I'm just I'm just razzing the boys. I know like, there's nothing a, mean like, about the it. The Cubs did really bad last night. That is factual. <laughs> that is a big. I mean, I'm a Cubs fan. Like I'm yeah. not like how dare you. Well, to be fair, Case, Case had a little snark to the comment, just a tad. But, I'm a snarky guy. But again, it was he's the White Sox fan, and I guarantee those seats next to it were eight dollars. The sections that were empty as well. It, it wasn't all like all of a sudden two hundred dollar tickets. No, next it, door. it wasn't a game at Wrigley where seats cost that much. It was it was still very cheap to get in in the game the entire time yeah. from every camera angle yeah did not look good and i'm glad because it shows the owner that you're not happy as a white Sox fan just why, like i want soldier field to be empty sunday completely empty i'll be down there with a sign urging you not to go in in the south lots in the tailgate section do not go in I know it's tempting. If you see Brian strap him to the hood of your car, like he does his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, something good. Last night, the Blackhawks won their first preseason game, 2-1 to one over the Blues. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> and I'll say this. Connor Bedard, that 18-year-old kid, Kenzie. Yeah. He looks amazing. Like he you're lo- into him? He looks really good. He, I mean, like he, he looks hot? Well, he is. I mean... I, I can't say an 18 year old guy is attractive. Hey, can he's, I? he's legal, man. He's, he's, he's oh, midnight. God, whatever his birthday he's, he's, was. We had, the, we had the Connor Bedard countdown going. <laughs> that is so bad. That's so creepy. It's it's better. It's listen. It's better than other shows have done with other people. At least we're doing Connor Bedard there, and I think he can handle it. Why does it matter? <laughs> this minor is way more appropriate. Yeah. What are you talking yeah, take about? Take that, Hillary Duff. <laughs> oh no. So anyway, he looked really good. Yeah, I bet. Uh, both on the ice and off the ice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Scooting around. Uh, Penn Get St- a piece of that puck. Penn State, <laughs> <laughs> Penn State at Northwestern tomorrow at 11 a.m. This is funny. You may not be aware, but college football teams practice with volume playing music so loud to get ready for the opposing team's stadiums. So when they practice all week, they're used to the volume of trying to call the plays. Mm. Penn State has been practicing with no music to get ready for Northwestern because they know how quiet it is at Ryan Field, and they're just saying, we're preparing for silence. So that's what we're doing. Now, Penn State's ranked very high. They're a very good team. Northwestern, not a good team, especially with, uh, well, the exiting of the coach and the hazing. And <laughs> they had some tough times. A little rough, uh, weird. A little less cheery than normal, <laughs> unfortunately. Weird shower things. That's yeah. what happened. The team wasn't good with the weird shower coach, but they're well, still they, not good. They won one game last year, too, before that. Well, we knew about the shower incident, so. In fairness, I think there was a lot of trauma wrapped up in that. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think you just get rid of the coach. It's like, you're all good now, right? Yeah, yeah. Take it off. Like, yeah, it's like, well, there's still a lot to unpack there. That's mm. not good. Uh, finally, Broncos, we just mentioned, Soldier Field. Uh, <laughs> Broncos are favored by three in on, this game. On the road. On the road, in Soldier Field, and they had 70 points put up on them last week. 70, almost an NFL record. One more field goal would have took it. I told Brian this off the air right before we did sports, but the ex-Bears running back, David Montgomery, who was with the team for a number of years and was a fine running back, you know, not, not anything special, but good. Very, very capable. He went to the Lions this offseason. As of right now, David Montgomery has five touchdowns on the year. The Chicago Bears as a football team Mm. has five touchdowns on the year. Yikes. It shows that everybody that puts on the blue and orange is broken. Correct. Like Patrick Mahomes. If he had come here, he'd been like Blockbuster. No, he would have got Jackson Mahomes instead. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I I will say that my only highlight of not getting Patrick Mahomes here is that his brother is not here. That's a huge plus. I really didn't want him. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101, the Know the Show Hour. So we're 20 minutes in. We will ask three questions about what goes on in this hour at 8 o'clock. And if you can answer them, the first person through will get tickets to Chicago Fire Inter-Miami next week with Lionel Messi. 
the second toughest ticket to get in Chicago this year after Taylor Swift, without question. These tickets are going for four figures at minimum uh, to get to this game. And we have midfield tickets, so that's why they're very, very valuable. They're like, yeah, these are nosebleeds. You're not outside. In a waiting area. We're tickets in the parking lot. We got you a tailgate you go pass. Hear the game, baby. We got you a parking pass. Oh uh, my god! So let's right now though get into clash with Kenzie three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. Call right now to compete in trivia, and you win. You are in for a treat of laughter from John Mulaney at the Rosemont Theater. So three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. Call right now to compete for those tickets. The Q one hundred and one Morning Crew. On Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. Let's go. John Mulaney tickets at the Rosemont Theater. And tickets are on sale today at 10 a.m. Uh, so go to Q101.com for the info on that. But we have Josh competing against Kenzie today. Josh checking in. He's on the road. Josh, ahoy. Uh, tell us something real quick about yourself. Uh, just on my way to work. Uh, about to start shift. I'm a firefighter. Oh, right on. Uh -huh. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Where do you fight fires? Uh, northern suburbs. It's very, sh very uh, not, not specific about this. Well, you want the fire to find them. <laughs> Five buyers that prevent. Yeah, you know. He's open for relaxed dates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to give him my location either. <laughs> How accurate is Chicago Fire, the TV show, to your life? I've never watched it, so. What? No. It's a great show. That's well, it's a bummer because right all the TV trivia right questions today are Chicago Fire. <laughs> That's right. That's too bad. That sucks. Okay. I did meet some firefighters at Riot Fest, and they were like, when I said that, they laughed so hard they hit the ground about how that show is not realistic. And that I'm, upsets me. I'm sorry, Brian. I know. I'm sorry a TV show isn't real life. It's very sad. Also, a Howard Stern's movie is not very similar to what we do, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let's Sands, get going uh, behind the curtain. I'm just going to go home then. Instead, let's do Clash with Kenzie. Uh, first one to five wins. If Kenzie gets one wrong, Josh, you can steal a point. She can do the same with you. Call heads or tails on the count of three. One, two, three. Tails. It's tails. Nice. Ready to go, Josh. Okay, here we go. Josh, which celebrity helped found the Skims clothing brand? Uh, three. Uh, Kim Kardashian. Two, Kim Kardashian's right. Josh has one. Uh, Kenzie. Yes. Uh, Capricorn is represented by what animal as its zodiac symbol? A goat. That is a goat. Uh, let's see here. Good job, Brian. Back to Josh. One point for Brian. <laughs> 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 uh, Josh, we'll do closest two on this one. While in play, how many players are on a water polo team? Uh, let's go with ten. Ten. Kenzie, what do you think? Uh, eight. Ah, Kenzie gets the point. Seven people on oh, a water seven. polo team. You'll never forget that fact now. Is it uh, is that for both playing or is it? For the team. So for he's, just one person. So I, I was just throwing out a number, but yeah. I was just curious. A lot of people in the water. A lot of oh. people. Baby, there's some people in the water. Kenzie. <laughs> Question. Two, two to one. Kenzie's ahead. Back to Kenzie. Uh, what does RC in RC Cola stand for? Oh, oh. Um, uh, Royal Crown. Oh, just before the buzzer. Royal Crown. I was crown. like Crown Royal like the alcohol. <laughs> I was like trying to flip it in my yeah. mind. Give me, some like, of that, Whoa. give me some of that Crown Royal in the RC. I'm like, ooh. Fun fact, when you go out to a bar in Chicago and you ask for a Coke or a Pepsi, usually it's RC Cola. Mm. They're just getting out on the gun. Huh. Mm. I don't know if that's true. It is. They don't, put, they don't put Pepsi and Coke really in there. It's RC Cola in Chicago. Uh, it's, it's cheaper. It tastes and it tastes almost the same. Right, but they, like restaurants have to do brand deals. So like Pepsi or Coca Cola, that's why they have like Sprite or Melly or this. You know, you know what I mean. But they bring the cans and the little bottles, little glass Coke bottles out now. A lot of times at the restaurants, you get those. Uh, Here's the thing. I hate to agree with Brian, but the bar by me, the one bar that I go to, has RC Cola, not Coca Cola. So you're one place. <laughs> I'm just saying he's Got on him. to something. I may have a little information about the city. Well, the three bars I go to. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. According to my brand, the 942 bars that I went to all had RC Cola. All right. It is three to one. It's back to Josh. Uh, Josh, uh, name two of the four C's that are named after colors. Uh, the red C three. and the black C. And a black C. That's right. There's also a white and a yellow C. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to Kenzie. Yes. 
Which team did NBA player Damian Lillard get traded to earlier this week? Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, it's tragic. It's very sad, but it's true. Bucking it up. Bucking it up, indeed. <laughs> uh, Josh, name one of the three types of rocks. Uh, three. Insidious. Oh, my God. Got it. Holy cow, Josh. Good job. Uh, Kenzie. This is for the win. Uh, why, does Kenzie have four? Kenzie has four. Josh has three. Oh, my goodness. Kenzie, are you ready? Okay. Hope it's not a rat question because <laughs> I was like, hard. <laughs> <laughs> hard rock. <laughs> All right, Kenzie. Alternative hard <laughs> and soft. <laughs> Oh, I wish I would ask you that question first, damn it. That's what I thought you meant. That sucks. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, Kenzie. Oh, uh, no. What is the name of Travis Kelsey's brother who plays for the Philadelphia Eagles? Jason. Oh, crap. <laughs> that's true. Jason Kelsey. Uh, Josh, I'm so sorry. It's all right. And, uh, we do have um, the Barbie movie that we can give away, though. So we like a little consolation, huh? You want that? Oh, I love Barbie movie. Welcome, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. impress the ladies, baby. I'll tell you what. Uh, you get a lady back to your place for the Barbie movie. Margot you're gonna... Robbie's in it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be just fine. The Q101 Morning Cruise Clash with Kenzie on Q101. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, three minutes away, your chance to those John Mulaney tickets. Stick around. Everybody's got a shot at them now. John Mulaney at the Rosemont Theater. And at the Allstate Arena right next door tonight, it's Monoskin. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew on Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101, those John Mulaney tickets in a second. But I want to remind you, it's the Know the Show hour. So everything we talk about this hour from 7 o'clock, we're 40 minutes in now, only 20 minutes left. I will ask you three questions about this hour, probably something from trivia there, um, at 8 o'clock. And if you can answer all three questions, you will be at the Chicago Fire Inter-Miami game next week with Lionel Messi the second toughest ticket to get in Chicago in 2023 after Taylor Swift. And we have them, midfield tickets. These are great seats. So if you've been listening for a little bit, keep listening because we'll have you know, another question coming up probably with stuff going on in the next 20 minutes here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. God bless the baby. 312-591-8300. Car 10 right now. You've got those John Mulaney tickets for the Rosemont Theater coming up Thursday, December 21st. Our friends at Live Nation hooked us up. And the tickets go on sale today, and it will sell out quick. But you've got them. John Mulaney with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. All right, a pretty incredible uh, 15 minutes here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101 coming up. You stay right here because we finish up the last 10 minutes of the Know the Show hour. Uh, that is your chance to get to Inter miami and Chicago Fire next week with Lionel Messi, the hardest ticket to get in town. So stay here in 10 minutes, roughly. We'll ask you the three questions about the 7 o'clock hour. You can answer them. You get the tickets. Also coming up, yes. world premiere music from U2. How mm -hmm. about that, Kenzie? New stuff at 8 o'clock from U2. Wow. Get this the... is a lot going on today. There's one more thing. Sadly, a Chicago icon, another iconic thing in Chicago is closing forever. And you may still have the memories, but new people won't get the memories if you've never been there. And this makes me really sad, actually, that this thing is closing. And we'll tell you what it is after Green Day. Mm -hmm. I know. Enjoy the Green Day song, though. It's uplifting and it's fun. Is it? It is. They're okay, listening. good. They're listening to it. Yeah. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101. Well, the Know the Show Hour has about six minutes left. Everything we talk about, it could be right in this break here. We'll ask you three questions about this entire hour, the 7 o'clock hour, and that's how you get the Chicago Fire Inner Miami tickets with Lionel Messi playing uh, the second hardest ticket in Chicago to get. After Taylor Swift. So stay here. You still got a shot. If you've been listening the whole hour, uh, be here. But we also have a sad thing to talk about before we get. And also have world premiere music from U2 coming up. Is that another Chicago icon goes down. And this one really hits me a little bit because I actually worked in the building. My first radio station here in Chicago was Rock 103.5 on the 40th floor of the John Hancock building. And the signature room, the restaurant at the top of the Hancock, the 95th floor, is closing. It actually just closed for good. They just put a sign up saying, we're done, cashed out. They have the lease till like 2031. 
but they put a sign up yesterday just saying it's, it's such a, a bummer. I know. And now you might think to yourself, well, I never went there and it's this hoity toity restaurant on top of the Hancock building, but a lot of people around Chicago, and maybe you're one of them, for high school celebration. You dreamed of going to that restaurant, even if you never made it. It's you dreamed like, of it. It's just like an iconic thing. One of my parents' first dates was at that restaurant. Really? He went full full force your dad. No, no, no. And you don't even realize. So the oh. story behind this is mm -hmm. my so my dad's from Chicago and my mom's from Ohio. Okay. Okay. And my dad met my mom in Ohio because he was like a traveling window dude. We know he's the he's the window he's mecca the of the window Midwest. Man. Yes. Um, and so he was living in Ohio. And listen, my mom likes what she likes. She told him, like, early on when they went on a few dates, she was tired of planning the dates. She goes, I don't like that I'm always planning the dates. Like, I, I like a man to take charge. But my dad was new to town. He's like, I don't know anything here. And this is before, like, Google. What was the best? You know, you didn't get to do that. No Yelp reviews out there yet. Right, it wasn't as easy. So he picked her up one day. Um... And was like, okay, and drives to the airport. They fly to Chicago, and he took her to the what? signature room. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, to impress her, because he was so nervous that she was going to be like, eh, you're not impressing me. He's like, okay, fine, I'll take you home, and I know good restaurants. Wow. Isn't that cool? And they came back, like, later, like, it was just like a little... Instead of, going to, instead of going to Famous Dave's in Toledo, Ohio, yep. he flew around a plane. He's like, well, screw this. I know where there's good restaurants. And how, what date was that, you think? I would guess within four Oh my god. Oh, they were like they were like psycho in love right away. Yeah. So he sealed the deal with that. Oh, absolutely. She was like, "Okay, this I like." <laughs> oh my god. See that that's what that that's unbelievable. Yeah, I can't believe that, that story. Is. is that cool? And that, and a lot of people have stories about the signature room at the top of the Hancock building like that for what, whatever it was a celebratory thing, it was a special thing. It was an expensive restaurant, I get it, and not everybody can afford that, but just the idea of going everybody has had who's lived in this area for a long time. And again, I remember, I didn't know anything about it. I worked in that building on the 40th floor. And I remember they said one day we're going up to the 95th. Like, oh my God. And it was this grandiose thoughts in my head of never being there at the time. And when you go up there and you just saw the skyline, the views up there completely different than the Sears Tower views, obviously where they're at proximity. But just, I love the Hancock building. It's my favorite building in the city. Hancock building is my favorite building. We're just the whole architecture of it and working in there right. and being up above the clouds. Even oh, the, beautiful. Oh, and it bums me out. Do you think that someone's just going to buy it and reopen it, though? It got to. It's space. I don't see that just going to ways. I think so. Like, I could see kind of like a let us entertain you getting in that space. I was thinking know, remodeling I was, it. I was thinking Buffalo Wild Wings get in there. Okay, that would piss me off. Like, wouldn't it be? Well, here's the thing. Make it accessible to more people. Could it be a badass sports bar? <laughs> or should it still be a... A no, elite I restaurant. Think it, I, listen, I don't think it it doesn't need to be like as but like a good Italian spot or yeah. something because it still is a destination. Yeah. You know, because if you're if you're gonna pay for that view and you're gonna pay, you don't want people like Whoa, in your face like we have their wing sauce on you. You know. Uh, that's kind of what I'd be doing up that's there. That's what you want. Yeah, that's what I want. That's kind of me. Oh um, God. The funny thing is, Kenzie, is before you got in this morning, I tell Case about this, and and you know, Case understood the importance of it too, and had never been there. And then he went, Case, our producer, goes, oh, 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 well, that's big news. You're right. But you'll never guess what closed in our neighborhood. And what did you say, Case? When so last night, I go to the Metro. I go to a show. I'm driving home. And we've all seen this spot, especially if you've ever, if you've ever gone to a Cubs game. I drive by the Burger King <laughs> on Irving Park in Southport, <laughs> and it's gone. I couldn't believe my eyes. Sign gone, restaurant, strip bear. The king is no more. Oh, Lord. Case. Kenzie, I laughed so hard. I told him about the signature room closing. He says the Burger King on Irving Park in Southport closed. I was stunned. I, you don't see a lot of Burger Kings go under. Yeah. They yeah. have sort of made you it their way. You don't even order fast food burgers, Case. Yeah, but they got chicken there. Oh, she's... Just, a, I, just a part of Case's brand. He's never had a fast food burger. He's had all kinds of chicken sandwiches, but not a fast food burger in and his I, life. And I like burgers. I make them myself. I eat them at nicer restaurants. I just love chicken sandwiches so much. I've never had a burger from a fast food place. So that's the that's, devastated about Burger King. Yeah, was, I was stunned. Can you? I uh, driving by a barren Burger King. Is that what you're? Oh my ask? God! Can you imagine? I, my jaw dropped. I like hit the guy that was driving with me. I go, Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! He thought maybe he hit something. He goes, What? 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 The Burger King is gone. Oh God! 
Maybe the signature room will move in there. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? They can afford that. Oh. They can afford the Burger King remnants on Irving Park if they can't oh afford the God. Hancock Boy, anymore. Real estate that's right by Wrigley and the Metro, and there's a Shell station across the street. Uh, they, I thought oh, that area was views. happening. <laughs> yeah, wonderful views. The Q101 Morning Crew. On Q101.